Today is August the 26th, 2014. My name is Tanya Fincham, along with Alex Bishop, and we're with Oklahoma State University. Today we're in Shawnee, Oklahoma, to speak with Kermit, Kermit Drake, and this is part of our Oklahoma 100 Year Life Project, so thank you for having us today. Let's start with having you tell us when and where you were born. I was born in McLeod, Oklahoma, March 8, 1914. And what did your parents do for a living? Farmers. What did they farm? Cotton. Did your mother help too, or just your father? All family. Oh, both. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I had three sisters and dead brothers. Ten brothers? No, no. Three, three sisters and a dead brother. And where were you in the order? Were you number, Were you the oldest or the baby or what? No, I'm next to the last. Next to the last. And where did you go to school? New Hope, Oklahoma, about south of McLeod. That was the name of the school? New Hope. New Hope. How many years did you go there? I graduated in eighth grade there. Okay. And that would have been probably? 1914. <laughs> That's when you were born. No. That's when you were born. Uh, yeah. Well, what, what, eighth grade I, would well, have been. I, I graduated when I was 14 years old. Okay. I was okay, 1926 then. Yeah. Okay. And then what did you do? I started helping folks farm. I quit school. I quit high school. I didn't like it. <laughs> what didn't you like? All of it. Oh. <laughs> homework? <laughs> did you didn't like homework? Doing yes, homework? Yes, yes. I was the main one. So you went to picking cotton more or doing other things? Well, you did it everything, you did it. whatever come about. Well, up until that point, how did you get to school? Walked. And about how far was it? Two miles. One way? Two there and two back. Two back. What in zero weather? We didn't stay. We didn't have snow days. <laughs> and what would you pack for your lunch, or would you? Well, that'd be a lot to say. Mother used to put a big sweet potato in there and he'd come home. We had cookies and maybe a fried sausage between the light bread. Oh, and she made the bread? She did. So sweet potatoes was something you farmed? Yes, we raised them. Raised them. Did you have white ones or yellow ones? Well, they only had one variety then. Then, the yellow Puerto Rico. Okay. <laughs> Hard to find a white one these days. That's right. They all are in now. Mm -hmm. Bogards. Okay. Big yielders. That's my last one I raised. Do you remember your first tractor? Yes. What was it? Or more. Uh, new or used? Hmm? New or used? As used. A trailer for a Ford. Okay. <laughs> Three point hitch. How, how young were you when you first drove a tractor? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was four or five years old. Mm. We had mules and teams plows. And do you remember your, the mules' names? Part of them. <laughs> what were a couple of them? One of them named Blue and the other named Red. <laughs> Real creative there. We raised them. You raised them. And did your mother participate in homemaker clubs? A club? Homemaker, home demonstration? No, she's just farm wife. Just farm. Have a big garden to can? Always. Canned much? She canned lots of stuff. Did you raise chickens? Yes. And whose job was it to, to kill the chicken? She did. She did. Bring her next off. But the kids didn't have to? No. No. Eggs were nickel a dozen. Depression. <laughs> During the Depression? You don't know what a depression is. No, tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> well, it'd be hard to do, really. There wasn't any money. There wasn't any work. There wasn't any jobs. Nobody had a nickel to buy anything with. Now we can buy 12 dozen eggs for 60 cents. Oil was 50 cents a barrel. 
Hmm. All the straight trains going very directions of a load of men going to California to get a job, but coming back to India. I'm not sure why that's doing that. Let's cut it off and try it again. No, people really think we're in depression now. We're in flourishing times. I don't know where it is. Compared to then? Yes. People didn't have anything to eat to come to town and live in a flock farm soup line, carry a bowl, get a bowl of soup. Government fed them. The government has ruined the people. They're depending on the government now. Mm -hmm. What the president did at that time was all right, but he should have stopped it. Should have stopped it. You know, you can make a good give a guy so much that he's going to expect the rest of your life. I know, it's quite a difference, isn't it? You could buy a place. I bought 80 acres of land for $400. Here in, here in, in Pottawatomie? Depression. Yes. Well, did your parents own the property where they farmed? Well, yeah, I bought it in 1915. Did they? Uh, Get to keep it through the depression. Yes, did they? Yes. Got an oil well on it now. That helps a little bit. Let me got a check today. Well, that's pretty good then. <laughs> so once you finished high, well, when you dropped out of school, you went to work for other people. I would, yeah, farming. Well, well help dad. My daddy's older than mother. His first wife died. And did you, uh, were you in the military? Did yeah. you join the... I was too old, 27, broke out. And I had a wife and her and my mother, four of us. I was class A, class F farmer all the way through. Never called up. Well, how did you meet your wife? Playing dominoes <laughs> on Saturday night. She followed me to the door and said, come have dinner with me tomorrow. And I did, was together from then on. <laughs> so she asked you. <laughs> That's the way I always figured it. <laughs> she was a good Christian woman. And wh when did you get married? 1938, 19th of June. Kind of during the tail end of the Depression then? Toward well, the end? yeah, we were still in it. What were you doing at that time? Farming? What were you raising? Cotton and corn. We had into blackberries, peanuts, and sweet potatoes, four crops. All come off different. She was a blackberry picker. <laughs> I didn't realize they grew blackberries in Oklahoma. Yeah, we had an acre and a half picked. 306 crates one year. We've got women and children pick them in, wouldn't sell them. And where would you take them to market? We had a bear association in McLeod. Okay. Hmm. And the growers put in money and build a shed, take them there and sell them. And what about the cotton? Where would you take it? McLeod. They had three gyms. I'm not sure where that town is. Is, is it still? Well, it's up here about 12 miles up here. Is it still a town? Dale, mm -hmm. up there by Dale. Mm -hmm. Jill Dale is the oldest town in Pot County. Mm -hmm. I'm learning new things. <laughs> <laughs> Always I've, good. I've got the record of it. Huh. Well, how, well, how has that, that town changed since you were younger, McLeod? You know, Dale or McLeod? Either one. Well, a whole lot. No stores in McLeod now. Dale had gins, blacksmith, barber shops, banks. They're just a wide open street now. Hmm. Used to be a stagecoach stop. Stage Let's go close to Fort Smith once a week. Hmm. And did you ever get to ride it? No. No. No, that's for my time. <laughs> How about the train? Well, they came in 95 through McLeod. 
today. She don't leave this little town. Mm. Well, how often would you come to Shawnee when you were younger? Oh, very, very seldom. That way to come to a, a high doctor. Yeah. We had a country doctor at McLeod. He delivered all the babies in your home and everything. Uh, you know. <laughs> and you called it coming to a high doctor? Yeah, one that could do surgery. <laughs> okay, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. Well, describe the house that you grew up in. Well, it's a, we bought it. It's over three years old. It's a homestead. Man, that homestead. It was a deaf man. They couldn't hear. Mm -hmm. They had a hard neighbor, hard hand, and she quit her husband and married a hard hand. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I tell you a lot of things, girl. <laughs> you get to be a hundred years old. Well, how was it heated, your house, the house? Uh, how was it heated? Wood. Wood. Had two flues. Two rooms. Two rooms? Wood cook stove. Wood dollar rick. Cut a rick today, rick it up, measure it, haul it, haul it to the cloud and get sell it for a dollar. Glad to get it. No, mm. oh, my. That's Depression. Well, talk a little bit about bath time. Bath? Uh huh. Take some water out of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> what, what number of tub? Number three. Number three. And would you have to share the water with everybody else? Well, no, we usually get our own. And how often? Well, we took a bath the other day, far from you had to. It'd be dirty, cloud, legs be black. And in the winter time? No, spring, summer. You'd then take a bath about once a week in the winter. And then where was it? Not outside? No, we didn't have bathrooms then. That's unheard of. You had an outhouse? Yeah. How many cedars? One. One, one cedar. Oh, would the, a traveling salesman come along very often? What a, a traveling salesman? Yeah, they come around selling goods. They butcher their beef and go to the country sell it. Buy what you want. Hmm. We butcher and sold them. No, they buy dresses. They come like a stagecoach full of material. He'd measure it off. Hmm. Take out the color you wanted. Now the depression that's made feed sacks a blue and they got to sell them, they grow up, dye them and make her dresses out of them. That's all the boy had material. Hmm. Dye that dress, same feed sack and make a dress. So your mother sewed a lot then? Yeah. yeah. Did, she, did she make the boys clothes too? She made me my knee pads. I never had a long pair of pants until I was twelve years old. <laughs> And how often would you get a new pair of shoes? About once a year. Mm. And how would they come? Did they come in the mail or did you go to the store? Went to the store. You got shoes fits you. Three dollars a pair usually. That's about all the cost. Mm. Well, do you remember having your first Coca-Cola? Well, yeah, we come to town with a man's hole of milk. And he'd buy us a bottle of soda pop, and he had called it Lehigh Soda Pop. What flavor was it then? Strawberry. Strawberry. <laughs> I'm a great girl. I am. She <laughs> brought me a mold. <laughs> <mother. laughs> <laughs> you got all this recorded? <laughs> well, it'll be something to listen to. <laughs> well, it's things you've never heard of. But what were some things you would do for fun growing up? Played baseball. Mm -hmm. For the town or just for? We meet on Sunday, Bunch House. Huh. Yeah. Or played school. Your favorite position? Yeah. I played first base. First. 
And now, I asked for the school teacher, 19 and 22. And I started school with one more. And your aunt was the teacher? Yeah. I was left-handed and she wouldn't let me write that away. Made me change. And I can't write good today. I see everything left-handed now. And when you dropped out of school, she probably wasn't too happy? No, I stayed there and finished eighth grade. With her? Yeah. Hmm. What were holidays like, Christmas and Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah, we had four days off for Thanksgiving, a week off for Christmas. Yeah. We had a pie server just before Thanksgiving. Didn't we get enough money to buy Christmas candy, have a Christmas tree, give everybody a sack of candy. Mm -hmm. And old orange, all the nitwit sacks drip out candy on you. They got to put them in paper sacks. Huh. Well, it was church an important part of, of growing yeah, up? Yeah, I started dad major school to Sunday school when I was eight and ten years old. We had Sunday school quarterings and a teacher. We had preaching and singing. We didn't have all these other things we got today. We had preaching and singing. And this old boy went home. Went to church in the wagon at night. Baptist, Methodist, what? As a Baptist, Baptist, missionary Baptist. Would they have revivals? Yes, in August when a cross was laid by. Two weeks to the three nights. Mm -hmm. And some of your favorite singing, I bet. Yeah, I used to lead songs in church. I loved, used to, used to sing, but I can't now. What was one of your favorite songs? <laughs> Near the cross. Can you sing a little bit of it for us? <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> Just a little. Jesus, keep me near the cross As it is forever You did it, i sing above Jesus, keep near the cross I like that, thank you. I love to sing. I come in singing as four years old in the Sweet By and By. That's a good song too, Sweet By and By. We'll use that at my funeral. <laughs> well, you want to sing it for us? <laughs> no, I could. But... Give it a go. Give it a go. In the Sweet By and By, we shall meet on a Beautiful shore. Do, 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 do. Don't remember all the words now. Now, in the sweet by and by, though, that's good. One of my favorites. And then I like I'll Fly Away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a faster song. I can't sing, so I enjoy other people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I sang two years to church music director. I enjoyed it. Never had any enemies. Mm. And so how many children do you have? Just one? A spoiled only child, huh? <laughs> See, spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. <laughs> Don't know how I do that. I know. I took care of her and now she got to take care of me. So have you always lived in Shawnee? No, 35 years right here. And before that? I was 47 years on home place. Moved up south of McLeod, about 16 on an acre. Two acres and I lived 16 years. Hmm. And then we came here. My wife died of Alzheimer's. Hmm. And didn't know her for six months. You took care of her though? I put her in a rest home the last six months. She didn't know me anything. It badly. Bad. And when when was that? Four years ago. Well soon will be. So how how old was she? She was eighty eight when she died. Oh, still pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Have any of your relatives lived to be a hundred? One sister's hundred and one. Wow. 
So she's still she's still living? No, they're no. all dead. No. Hundred and one though. Must be in the genes. What yeah. what do you think contributes to that? A lot of hard work. And the life they live. The life they live. Is there anything on your bucket list you you still want to do? No, not now. Not now. No, I'm through. Waiting on the Lord now. Well, on a, in a typical day, what do you do? How, mm -hmm. On a typical day, what do you do? How early do you get up? Oh, I get up now about 6.15. I can't stay in bed in daylight comes. Got up, used to 4 o'clock in the morning to start work. And then what do you do during the day? Not anything now. They're long for me. Get up at six, go to bed at six, twelve hours. You mow the grass. Huh? You mow the grass. Oh, I mow the yard, yeah. I've got to ride more. <laughs> Watch much television? Uh, the news and the weather, I turn it off. Football game, just kid it. <laughs> what about reading? Do you do much of that? No. No. I don't like that. How did you celebrate your 100th birthday? Tell him. Had a party at the church and invited all of his friends. Had a real big turnout. Yeah, well, okay. you, you show, let me show a picture too. Well, they may want to do that later. Then I'll just show you just a little bit. That's how it is. It sounds does a lot more work than he admits, and that kind of goes against him. But the doctor said, leave him alone. Anything I, I need to ask him you want him to tell us? No, no, I don't think so. I'm sure there were just a few here. <laughs> How? Yeah. You don't look a hundred. Tell what the church said. <laughs> so the night said it looks 70. 70. I guess it means 70s. Pretty sharp looking. Oh, thank you. And, and I'm thankful for his good mind. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty sharp. He comes over to the house and spends a day with me uh, every week, at least a day. I still drive. For him. You still drive? He still drives. I've uh, got the streets that are pick. The busy streets, I don't know what they are, I avoid them. Everybody in Pot County is on those two. <laughs> Kick and pull it hair. When you were farming, did you ever do uh, take your produce to the farmer's market? No. No? No. You said you raised sweet potatoes. Yeah, I made 2,200 bushels last year. And Dale bought them, had in 10 acres. Sold them all to one man for $4,000. That was the last crop you harvested? Uh, yeah, they are big. I had a few that I lived here on a little farm out here in town. Hmm. Then you raised sweet potato slips and sold. Yeah, I've got to tell them slips, make about money off that and anything. What's the sweet potato slips? Plant. Of the plant. Pull them, yeah. Bed, bed about 20, bush or 25, to cover them with dirt. And 20th of March, and they'll come up like my fingers. And you pull them, and I sold them $10, $10 a hundred. Hmm. Well, when did, when did you quit farming? 65 years ago. I went in the dozer business. And the what business? Dozer business. Dozer. Playing in the dirt. So pushing timber down. Colored people again coming out of the towns. I mean the white people. Getting away from them and buying acres just buy five acres, have them clean it off and build a house pad. They'd build a house. Here around Shawnee? At West of Town here. West of Town. Did you buy your dozer? Did yeah. you buy? Twenty five hundred dollars for the first one. Now they're two hundred thousand. 
Well, when did you quit doing that? 65 years ago. No, when you quit? I retired. Retired 65 years ago? Right, at age, age, age 65, no. you retired? I uh, 65 years old. Okay. Yeah. 65 years old. So then what have you been doing since then? Like the last 30 or so years? I don't know anything. <laughs> you and your wife travel? Yeah. We have five years with a couple of our age in church. We went plumbing to Canada. I've been to the Keys, Yellowstone five times, Kentucky Cave. We're traveling everywhere. We put a hundred dollars a piece in the kitty every day. Use that up. Just go and we put it back. We get gas in four cents a gallon. He had a good car, air conditioning, everything. Oh, life's been something. I can't hardly breathe now, lady. Uh, I've got water around my heart, and they give me a medicine to pull it off, but it's not doing it. I've had a heart valve put in my heart. Hmm. I've been up and down, still up. <laughs> still up. Still up. <laughs> Some phone? That was Lynn calling me. So what, what's your motto in life? What, what, how, what's your philosophy? Living or what? Yeah. Well, just farm or whatever come necessary. Yeah, I had no big advance I want to make. I wasn't qualified for a lot of things. I wasn't a good mechanic. You've got what you can do, and there's things you can't do and never will do. You went to Midwest City quite a few years and worked, helped the carpenters. Yeah, outside. I did a little carpenter work. Mm -hmm. Helped build Midwest City. You know where it is? Mm -hmm. I worked up there three winters and two summers, dollar a day. Drove. 18 miles, up there 18 miles back at night. Uh, or Bill Atkinson, you've heard of him, <laughs> runs for governor. I, I built, I decked his brother's house, HB's. I've been around. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the Dust Bowl? Did that affect you any? The, the Dust Bowl, did that hit here any, or did it impact you? Well, I guess you couldn't see the sun. Get up the next morning and your pillow would be dusty where you lay. Hmm. And the blood of the world looked red, you couldn't even see the sun. Dirt in there. Get the next morning about 10 o'clock, see a black cloud coming. Dust. Going all day. Hmm. <laughs> would you lose some of your livestock during that? What? Would you lose some of your livestock during that? Oh, I don't know. No. Chickens? <laughs> what were some of your chores when you were a little boy? Some of your chores? What's the same thing? What kind of chores did you do when you were a little boy? Oh, we shook corn to the mules at night, fed them, pumped the water in the tub, and had the water mules to come in. Had a breaking plow, you had to walk all day with a 12 inch plow. Take it forever, break the ground. <laughs> and what would be something your mother would cook that you really liked? Well, we eat hog meat year round. She made lard, the big wash kettle, and we had lard year round, hog meat year round. Mm -hmm. We put her four, one, uh, four hogs with 400 pounds apiece, 1,600 pounds of meat. There's eight of us. Butcher my dad and put them in a wagon, leave them out all night, let them freeze out, put a little salt on them, and put them in a box in the smokehouse, and then spring hang it up and I smoke it with hickory wood. Gives it that odor and taste. Sounds good. It sounds <laughs> it was good. Was good. <laughs> we had soldiers for breakfast and spare ribs. Oh, we all have cholesterol uh, now. <laughs> now look at soldiers, four or five dollars a pound. Yeah. 
in about six hours out of a pound. Well, would she can some of it? No. No? We just hang the meat up and keep it in the smokehouse. When you smoke it and everything, and hickory wood, it gives it a taste. Well, where would you get the hickory? Oh, we had timber. On your property? Hickory, yeah, a lot of hickory. Hmm. Cut it and split it. Just let it burn lightly all day. Smoke. And did you have fruit trees? No, we had three or four peach trees, but the ground to put them on didn't do good. It's too sandy. Taste that dirt to fruit. Well, did the farm have a pond? Yeah. yeah. Went down and go swimming. That's why I said, you did a little bit of fun then. Yeah, when the sons were gang, I'd go down there. Had some old catfish in there. We'd catch a six inch fish and we thought we had something. <laughs> Put a frog on the hook and they'd bite it. I grew up though, we got to go to the Arkansas River and catch catfish. Because 45 pound flatheads on perch. Catch perch and bait 200 hooks. Ever try noodling? No, that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> you get caught in that. Get killed. Her son then do a little of it. <laughs> well, that would take. I turn that fan on if you get new warm in years. You know, just be comfortable. Uh, too much noise. That's why they've got it off. It's noisy, man. <laughs> So how did you propose to your wife? I asked her, she'd marry me. Well, she, she said, well, Dad might not let me. I said, well, I'll find out. I went to town with him Saturday, and we was sitting in town. He's reading the paper. I said, I'd like to ask you a question. My wife, my girlfriend, and I proposed to get married. You got any objections? He said, no one knew like I do, no. I went home and told her. We got to getting ready. Yeah. That was that was kind of the custom. Well, I said, well, I'll ask him. Yeah. And, and where where did you get married? Here in Shelley, 22, 23 North 8, lot up here. My sister. In a house? Yeah. In a house. Justice of the Peace or a preacher? Preacher. Preacher. He used to be our minister of church. I used to sing for him. And did you go on a honeymoon? No. no, I went to work the next day. <laughs> we married on Sunday. We didn't have honeymoons them days. <laughs> that was just the times, wasn't it? Just the times. Mm -hmm. And what year? What year was that? Thirty-eight. Got married in thirty-eight. Nineteenth of June. Thirty-eight. Well, do you remember getting electricity on the farm? Yeah. 1954. What was the first thing you did? And I bought a TV. <laughs> <laughs> Got a 40 line walk bulb. <laughs> I saw a TV before you could ever see one that to go in a dark room. <laughs> went to the fair, we went in a dark room, the lights all out, turned the TV on. Turned the lights on, you couldn't see that. They found us, however matter. Huh. Now, the county fair, did you ever enter any of your sweet potatoes? So, yeah, I, I won three state fairs. Muskogee, Tulsa, and Oklahoma City. Cool. Hmm. I made $168. I gave the county agent half of it. He helped me. <laughs> and about when was that? Why you were? And then about 1945. Mm -hmm. So you knew what a county agent was then? Yeah, Walter yeah. Beckham. Yeah, he's about my age, he played violin. We played together. Violin? Mm -hmm. You can play? I, I don't violin, I play the guitar and French harps. I got microphones, I play them both at once. I got a good amp I want to sell. I'll never <laughs> use it anymore. How did you learn to play those? Well, when one Christmas, my uncle bought my sister an old six-dollar guitar. They come home on Christmas Eve, settled up on his knee. She got to pick it on it, and I did two, ten years old. He also plays the piano. 
Uh, I told her you also played the piano. Yeah, I play a little on that. You play by ear. I don't play with music. She's a music teacher. <laughs> Playing by ear is kind of tough though, isn't it? <laughs> well, she said I can't learn music because I want, I know where to go <laughs> as when you change my ear. I, the notes don't, I can look at a song book and tell you what key all the songs I wrote in, but I can't read music. Hmm. I know all the keys. Now what about radio? Did you ever listen to the radio? or? Yeah, radio I got an old country western session I get. But did you listen to it as a kid growing up? or? Oh, no. Later in life. Never retired yet. No. Well, you know, no. well, what do you think your secret to longevity is? Your secret to living such a long life? What I think the hard work of life is lived. Mm -hmm. I think sure do. You sit around in a chair all the time, you're not going to be able to do anything. You do it. You got to be tough and used to it. Do you remember seeing your first airplane? Mm hmm. Two wing, settle the mare, so on. I went to the Zoo Spring Lake in Oklahoma City on the 4th of July, my uncle, four years old. And one came over, and everybody was pointing and looking at it. I'll never forget it. <laughs> I got a good memory. You sure do. What about your first car? Oh, I was growing married. Boy, bought it thirty five dollars. Drove it ten years. You saw the bells cotton off on it. And I sold it for seventy five. <laughs> what, what kind was it? Huh? What kind of car? The Ford Ford, Ford pickup. <laughs> that little bed now, put extra sides on it, tailgate down, put 1,500 pound cotton, hmm. bale of cotton. Huh. Well, what's the biggest change you've seen, do you think? The world as a whole. We're, the, you know, we're in the last days, lady. If you don't read the Bible and know anything about it whatsoever, when you see things happen now that you've never seen or heard of, what else could you know? Did you see 11 inch of rains all your life? No. Now they have them. They don't stop, they just keep coming. They just keep coming. Earthquakes, they're not man made. They're not man made. That's what they're trying to say, though. Taking all the oil out of the ground now. <laughs> Making all sorts. <laughs> no, I believe the Bible. I don't believe that stuff. The Bible said, read it to see if you're saved. They love to keep my commandments. I can tell you all about it. It sounds like you can. <laughs> you all probably know it. <laughs> But you don't find many people believe in this. There's just two things count now, a job and football. <laughs> I tell them the day Jesus comes, I'll have a football game. <laughs> 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 I don't have anything to do with football. Nothing to do with football. Well, do you follow any baseball since you played baseball? Yeah. Well, you usually like one sport, and that was. They might. Baseball. Do you follow a particular team? Say what? Do you follow a team? Baseball well, team? I used to. I know men heard it. So she'd know. She'd say, Daddy, what's one of my betting on? <laughs> <laughs> We'd listen to old Bastard Radio on back to the last six months. Dry sales. Well, did your mother do much quilting? All winter. 
Oh, wow. I have to put the frames up in the house. We do them every night. And before we went to bed, wrap them up. And the, four, four frames. And I have to place them in. I the, know all about it. In the kitchen or in the living room? The living room. Mm -hmm. Yep. They have quilting parties for ladies that come once a week to hurry out for somebody else. And all quilt on a quilt. Do they don't do that anymore. Do you have have one she made? No, I don't think so. I think we got the last one. No, I made some of us stole it. I have all the ones his mother made. Okay, that's good. That they're safe somewhere then. She got all my sisters. Well, I she had a bunch of stuff. Hmm. Well, do you still have sweet potatoes to eat once in a while? No, I buy them. You buy them? She cans them for me. I got them now. I candy them for him. I like them candy. I don't like them baked. <laughs> you want they're a little more sweet with your sweet potato? Yeah, they're a dollar a pound. Buy them jumbos. Where do y'all live? Still water. And football is football. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I used to go up there in the sweet potato business. I can't think of the guy's name. It formed the red gold sweet potatoes. It, there, they count the agent take him, get his wife take me up there. They meat. They grew up a new variety of potatoes called red gold, very popular. Now, now, if history were written about you, what, what would you want it to say? Well, I'll just let you all say it. <laughs> That'll that work. That'll work. <laughs> but I would say there's a little bit like me. <laughs> well, is there any story you want to tell us before we shut it off? No, I think we're about to live the line. <laughs> well, I appreciate you talking to us. Well, I appreciate talking to you. Yes, ma'am.